Hi everyone, this is Nian. Today I'm going to be painting a loose style landscape. I didn't really use any reference for this, I just wanted to practice painting loosely and focus more on the values and things like that as exercise. Before I started, I just want to quickly sketch out the rough composition to see the balance for the trees, also the depth and perspective of the painting. I knew I wanted to include some trees, some long grass texture in front, and a pathway, so at this point, I just tried to place them all together into this thumbnail sketch without thinking too much of the balance, but I just want to see all the elements together and what it looks like and what I can do further to create a better composition. After sketching out the first where I place all the elements that I want to include, I'm going to sketch another one where I'll be thinking more about the composition this time. I'm going to play a bit more with the height of the trees and I'm also going to leave a bit more space in between the walkway or the pathway so the composition looks a bit clearer. Then I'm also going to finish this up with some birds in the sky. I feel like this has a better diagonal composition because of the height of the trees and somehow it just also feels a bit more balanced to me so I'm going to stick with this composition and before I paint I'll go through all the colors I'll be using. Sepia by Holbein, Vermilion by Holbein, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, E. Gamboche by Daniel Smith, Terra Verde by Holbein, Cerulean Blue by Holbein, and Indigo by Schmincke. So let's begin to paint. I'm going to first activate a bit of Terra Verde and also New Gamboge to mix it together but as you can see I'm leaving out a bit of Terra Verde on the left and on the right hand side is where I have more of the yellow green mixture. This way I have easier access to both colors and with this yellow green I'm going to use medium consistency to paint the first tree. As you can see I've left out a bit of white space in the middle so I can extend the color while it's still a bit damp using a mix of terra verde and indigo for the darker green. Next I'm going to paint the tall grass in front of the tree. I'm using yellow ochre mixed into the yellow green and I also added a bit of the vermilion and I'm using the tip of my brush here to paint grassy textures for the edges and then I'm going to follow this up with a clean damp brush to smudge the bottom and continuing downwards with a light consistency of the yellow green from the tree earlier. While the surface is still damp, I added more yellow ochre into the yellow green and I painted more of the grassy texture on the damp surface. I then cleaned my brush and picked up the darker green mix from Terra Verde and Indigo and I'm using a light consistency to paint the field where the trees are going to be and once I've established the space, I'm going to continue to paint the taller tree. I first use the yellow green color, then I'm following this up while the surface is still damp using more Terra Verde in the mixture. As I'm applying the paint, hopefully you can see that I'm slightly rotating my brush especially for the edges to create different textures and shapes to depict some loose leaves. While the surface of the tree is still a bit damp, I decided to also introduce a tiny bit of vermilion mix into the yellow ochre on top of the larger tree and the smaller one just for a little bit of color variation. As you can see, I've also left out a lot of white negative space for the tree so it looks a bit lighter and less dense. And while I wait for the trees to dry, I'm going to move on to paint the pathway. I used a mix of yellow ochre with vermilion and I used a light load so I can create a little bit of a dry brush texture. Next, I'm going to paint the field on the right. I use a thin consistency of the lighter green and then I continue the edges while the surface of the light green is still damp with the bluish green from Terra Verde and Indigo. As for the bush, I started using a thick consistency of the light yellow green mix with a light to dry brush load so I can create those uneven dry brush textures. Then while the surface is still wet, I added a little bit of vermilion and also the darker green with Terra Verde Indigo and a little bit of vermilion this time to mute the color. 
For the next tree, I added more cherry verde into the yellow green and this time I'm going to make the tree edges a bit more rounded. Then I'm going to follow this up with more new gamboge around the edges as well as the center. I find that by varying the hues, it adds a bit more interest to the painting. I'm also going to add some darker values by adding a bit of sepia into the yellow-green mixture for the tree that I painted earlier. And I'm just going to place this on parts of the damp surface and also the bottom of this tree. I wasn't too sure what to do with the base so I ended up extending the bush area. I used the terra verde mixture from earlier and I used the dry brush texture again to paint the edges of the bush and I also used the same mixture to add more textures for the bush on the right which is completely dry by now. For the field on the left, I decided to glaze over a yellow-green color because I felt like the temperature of the base color was a bit too cool. And with this color, I'm also going to try to establish the edges of the long grass in front. Next, I'm going to start painting a bit of the background. Here, I just took some of the greens that I already had on my palette. I'm using a light to medium consistency. Then I decided to add some indigo into the greens that I already had on my palette to create a cooler tone to add another layer of hills. I'm going to go back to the pathway here. I'm going to add some shadows using the base color, which is from yellow ochre and a bit of vermilion with added indigo this time to darken the tone. And here I'm just painting on some lines horizontally and I'm also going to extend this downward slightly. I think I've pretty much painted all the base color for the elements here. So next I'm going to build on the values I'm first going to tackle the trees. This is from a mix of terra verde and a lot of indigo and also a tiny bit of sepia. I'm going to paint this at the bottom left side of all the trees. I'm putting most of the darker colors for the tree on the right and a little bit less for the trees on the left side. As I'm painting the darker values, I'm also thinking about how the tree is being shaped and which areas might protrude outward so the edges stays uneven and more organic. Here I'm using a mix of cherry verde, sepia and a bit of vermilion to create a brown color. I'm going to place this as the shadow for the right bush and for the left side I'm going to use a mix of indigo, terra verde and also a little bit of sepia to create this dark blue green color and I'm also going to use this to paint the shadows for the grassy area in front or the field to add a bit of height. Moving on to the tall grass in the foreground, I add a terra verde to the brown mixture that I used earlier and I'm using a light consistency here to paint the shadows at the bottom while leaving the top part as the yellow base color. After that, I want everything to be completely dry so I'm just going to use a hair dryer. This way I can paint on the finer details. The first thing I want to add are some trees in the background on top of the hills and for this I use Terra Verde with indigo and I'm using a medium consistency with my liner brush. As I'm applying the paint, I'm using the side of my brush and I'm trying to flick it upwards while wiggling my brush to create a little bit of a dry brush texture and uneven edges. I also want to add some larger trees in the background to differentiate the color. I used the muted yellow green from New Gamboche, Terra Verde and a little bit of sepia. While the surface is still wet, I'm also going to add a bit of New Gamboche for a bit of color variation. Next, I want to add more horizontal lines to the pathway as well as the field area. I'm just using the dark green that I already had on my palette. I just find that this helps our eyes to separate the different surfaces of this painting. Next, I'm going to paint the tree trunks. I already have some terra verde with indigo on my palette and here I'm going to add vermilion and sepia. I'm going to use a thick consistency with my liner brush to paint the stem and the branches for these trees. When I'm painting really thin lines, I like to use 
a very light to dry brush load so the paint travels much slower through your bristles. This way I can control the lines without creating puddles. For the taller tree, I like to leave out a bit of space for the line of the tree trunk so it looks like parts of the tree trunk is being covered by the leaves while some are peeking through. So I'm basically going to use the same method and technique to paint the stems and the branch for the tree on the right hand side as well as some branches for the bush. I feel like I have a decent amount of details for now, so I'm going to move on to paint the sky very lightly. I don't want the sky to take away from what we've just painted, so I am using a really really light consistency of cerulean blue to paint the base color. Next I'm going to create a dark blue mixture from cerulean blue with a little bit of indigo and I'm still using a light consistency here but before that I also want to clear out an area using tissue to take off some excess paint. Then I'm going to paint using the darker muted blue in the light consistency at the bottom of those white areas which will be the clouds. As for the darker blue, this will be the shadows under the clouds, so I am trying to create somewhat of a cloudy texture underneath the white areas and I just tried to create uneven edges like I did for the trees. On the left side, I'm going to create some distant clouds. So for this, I'm not trying to make the size too big. Instead, I try to make it more of a textured line instead, but I'm still painting them on very lightly. I'm going to leave the sky for now and let it dry. Meanwhile, I'm going to work on the foreground. Here, I'm trying to work on the edges of the foreground to make the edges look more apparent. Then I'm going to wet the bottom part of the surface, then go back in with a slightly thicker consistency of a dark green and try to paint more of the grassy texture and just letting the color travel naturally so it looks a little bit more textured with the blooming effect. Next here I'm adding the birds using my liner brush. As for the color, I'm using a medium consistency of indigo and cerulean blue which is the same color mixture as the clouds. Here I'm just going to add some touch-ups for the texture of some of the trees and the bush and for the sky I'm adding a really light consistency of yellows on the right side so it looks like the sun is coming from the right hand side. I also added some diagonal lines using the mix of indigo and cerulean blue in a really light consistency and I feel like by adding those diagonal lines it adds to the diagonal composition of this whole painting. We've basically finished the composition, so here I'm just going to fix certain areas. If I find that there are holes like in the pathway here, then I'm going to dry it off and add a little bit of finer textures to the edges of the trees. Here I'm adding a little bit of leaf textures to add a bit more detail for the trees. I'm going to limit the amount of texture though so I don't overwork the painting and I'm also going to do this for the other trees as well. Next I'm going to use a mix of indigo and terra verde in a dry brush load so I can create really fine but textured lines to depict a little bit of detail in the fields. 
For the texture of the bush, notice how I'm using a dry brush load so I can flatten my brush and I'm rotating my brush around to create different angled lines. I'm also going to add a bit of detail to the foreground. I'm just using any yellow green that I already have on my palette and I'm using a dry brush load using my liner brush to flick the lines according to where I want them to grow. And I'm going to do this with a darker value green as well for the details in front. I want to also introduce a different type of texture. As you can see, I've been using the side of my flattened brush. This time though, I'm using the flat side where I've kind of separated the bristles because of the dry brush load. And you can see I'm creating multiple lines at the same time. And I'm also going to do this on the right hand side. For the pathway, I used a bit of sepia and the browns that I already had on my palette and I'm just going to paint on some thin lines horizontally. Lastly, I'm going to add a bit more yellow on the right hand side here in a very thin consistency which looks more like tinted water and I'm also going to enhance some of the diagonal lines in the sky. I also decided to darken the bottom of the sky by using a bit more of the indigo and cerulean blue mix. So there's a slight, very subtle gradient from the darker color at the bottom and the brighter colors on top. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop before overworking it. I'm quite happy with how this turned out, but I know I still need a bit more practice when it comes to making more intentional brush marks. But anyway, I feel like this was a good exercise for me and I hope it will be for you guys as well. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial and would like to watch more content like this, please consider subscribing. All the tools and the list of my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!